Okay, I think we are live. Can someone? Hello, everybody. Good Let's morning. To see you. Yeah. Yeah. I see it. Okay. Just wait we for some people live. to join. Yeah, that's good. So, you just give it a couple of moments for people to join in. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, how your morning have been, girls? <laughs> uh, it's it's so dark here and very foggy and cold. Mm. So it's a bit hard to get up in the morning. Yes, yeah, more <laughs> difficult than usual. I, I usually get up pretty early, but now it's like nah, five more minutes, ten more minutes. Can we yeah. just skip this? <laughs> totally. Hello, Nuria. Good morning. Good morning, Nuria. I hope you're Hello. enjoying your Saturday. Hello. See people are joining in. That's great. Let's just give it a couple more minutes. Hello to everyone who's joining. Everyone who's joining, you can tell us where you're joining from and how you yeah. are doing this morning. We're, I'm a little sleepy. <laughs> I've had my coffee, but I think I might need another one or not. We'll see. <laughs> yeah same here hello thank you for joining in okay just a couple more minutes and we'll start our anniversary anniversary life okay okay see more people joining in that's amazing hello Okay. Do you want to start? Yes. All right. So uh, once again, hello everyone. Thank you for joining in this morning. Hope you have a nice Saturday morning and you're waking up together with us. So uh, we will um, today be answering your questions as a question answer session, and it's dedicated to an, a year of uh, our project. It's our anniversary today. We are really excited and uh, happy to be sharing this experience with you. So the way it will be uh, um, structured today's life um, is first we'll talk a little bit about the project, share the good memories with you, how it all started, of you know what we have achieved, and then we'll answer the questions that we got in advance. Uh, as you know, we've asked our subscribers to send us in the questions, so we have um, quite some um, a few a few questions which we will answer. And then, um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. We'll uh, look at them if um, if we have time. And of course, if there are some questions that we'll uh, won't have time for, we'll answer them in the comments. So please, please put your questions um, in the comments. Um, okay, so um, first we'll, we'll talk a little bit about how it all started. As you know, it's been a year uh, that our project is live and um, we are really lucky to be part of it. So we all have uh, been part of um, uh, Turi Trugas International Dog Trainer Education in Barcelona, Spain uh, uh, from 2018 to 2020. This is where we met and this is where the idea was born for the Smile English project from our amazing colleague from um, Australia, uh, Jenny Goldsby, who came in with, uh, came up with this phrase, Smile English, we really liked it and Turi Trugas really liked it. So this is where the idea kind of came from. And then three of us been on it since day one, since the, uh, our trip home uh, in the airport, we've already been yeah. uh, creating the, the page. Do you remember girls like just messaging um, and uh, creating it? So this is how it all started and we've been so involved since day one and we really uh, are still um, engaged and, uh, you know, every day talking to each other, it's really, um, a really incredible experience for us as well. So I want to tell you first kind of a, a bit of a summary about the Smiling Leash project if you are not familiar with it yet. Um, the Smiling Leash project is here to change our perception of a walk with a dog. 
simply, right? Uh, we want to show the world the world a way of walking that is good for both dogs and humans. On our Facebook and Instagram pages and also our website, you'll find photos and videos of people having relaxing walks with their dogs on a long, loose, smiling leash. You'll also find useful tips and interesting facts about dogs. Um, I think you see we are posting a lot of articles. Yeah, so that's about the project. Something you want to add, girl? I'm sorry, I've been talking a lot. <laughs> well, honestly, I, I can't believe that it's been a year right. because we were True. just about finished with our course, the International Dog Trainer Education. This was the last like normal session. We had session over, sessions over long weekends in Spain. Uh, and what we were really expecting from that three day session was some repetition, some, you know, honing our skills before the final one where you present your project and then you're done. Mm -hmm. But instead, like basically overnight, based on this phrase, smiling leash, and on a conversation that some of the people in the course had with Turid, uh, Turid came up with this idea smiling leash we have to do something about it and this was something like that happened literally overnight and in the morning she said we have to do something about it today right. <laughs> and we did that day we scratched everything that was planned for for the lessons and we went outside and we filmed and photographed the dogs that were there with us having smiling leash walks and having smiling leash moments and it was really it was such a fantastic day i remember that day like it was yesterday yeah and we yeah. were like yeah, we have to do something what are we doing we need a plan we came up with a plan really quickly everything was going on really quickly it was quite exciting for me probably for everyone yeah, else also, yeah because everybody got really involved and we had some great materials from there from that mm -hmm. day with all the students from the IDT uh, filming. I remember the ones from uh, Jenny and Richard mm -hmm. and uh, Maria. Those, those videos uh, were amazing because we had Roque, the baby. Maria's baby was there as well. He's, he's an educator for the future. <laughs> and we had some wonderful dogs as well. Those dogs were great. Yeah. Oh, Kinds, little dogs, big dogs, all kinds of characters, all kinds mm. of and ages, and they all showed how every dog can have a nice relaxing walk on a loose leash. It doesn't matter. Everyone can do it. It just takes a little bit of practice and everyone can really, really do it and have a good time doing it. And it goes for people too. So it was really yeah. fun to film. I think uh, we got in so uh, much inspiration from Turid and from our, um, you know, friends on the course that is still lasting. I feel like we still, you know, yeah. live on that inspiration. But it's incredible. We are in touch with many of them still. Yeah. You know, we are talking and chatting to them nearly on a daily basis. Yeah. So <laughs> and maybe we can show the first video that we did and that yeah, we posted yeah. on the yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's so, just have a look. This is a yeah, historical so. moment. This was the first smiling English video, <laughs> and I still love it. It's one of my favorites, actually. And we've posted many since then. Yes, just give me a moment. So I'll start sharing the screen. OK, you can see it? Yes. OK, perfect. I'll click play. So this is Santi from our class and his beautiful dog, Nuka. And this is actually how they are. This is, this is them all the time. Uh, you can see that Santi is waiting for Nuka when she wants to sniff something. So they're really doing things together. They are in tune and it's really lovely to watch. And this was the the where we were doing all the uh, practicals with uh, Turid in Cardedeu. Mm -hmm. And Nuri, Nuria is here, isn't she? Yes, she, she is. She will remember this very well. <laughs> yeah, Nuria was the organizer of the whole thing. Thank you, Nuria, yeah. for bringing us all together. <laughs> 
Hey. I, I still love this video. This is what it's all about, really, for me. Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry I have some. Uh, no, no worries. I'm just I'm... stop sharing. I yeah, think. you're right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. We are back. <laughs> So yeah, it, this this is the kind of videos we post usually. Some of you probably know that. If you have any of these videos and you want <laughs> to see your dog on the Smiling Leech pages, please send us your videos. You can go on our website and you'll see how to do that. Uh, yeah. But now I think it's about time to start with our questions. We got some really, really good questions in advance. Uh, yes. So thanks to everyone who sent in their questions. This is the these are the questions we're going to start with. Uh, before we do, maybe just a word about our answers. Some of you are asking about very specific behaviors about your dogs or a certain dog. Uh, of course, if we wanted to give you a definite answer to explain the behavior of your dog, we would have to see your dog and talk to you and have an in-depth conversation. That's mm. the only way that it's ethical and fair to really explain the behavior of a certain dog. So of course we can't do this over the internet like this. What we can do is we can give you an idea, some things that we know to be true, some things that are usually true, and this is more something for you to think about, something for you to ponder. It's It can't be a definite answer. And I'm sure that you understand this, but I just wanted to say it anyway. So we're on the same yeah, page. <laughs> general guidelines and, you know, some good ideas. Yeah. So yeah, maybe we can so, start. <laughs> yeah, shall I, shall I read the first question? Yeah. Yeah. OK. So hi. I have a two-year-old dog. When he goes for a walk, he rarely stops to sniff and he always walks by my side. Why is this? It's been quite a long time that he behaves like this. Thank you. Okay. Yes. So <laughs> we can talk about why the, the dog not uh, doesn't sniff and we would suggest probably that we start walking a lot slower, wouldn't we? You know, like yeah, that's if we want, want to, to, yeah, if we want to get the dog to start sniffing, definitely uh, we need to slow down and mm -hmm. allow the dog to walk much slower and start sniffing. But then there is the other side of the question, isn't it? That there's always by my side. So what I'm um, guessing, and I can't know, but a lot of the times, this is a learned behavior. So yeah. a dog is walking by a human side because the dog has learned to do so. Because yes, mm -hmm. of course, a lot of the time we might think, well, that's how it's supposed to be. But unfortunately, if a dog spends the whole walk just following the human walking by the human side, this isn't much of an experience for the dog. Uh, this kind of walk doesn't provide any mental stimulation, any chance to make decisions, to you know, learn something new, experience something new. So mm -hmm. it's always better to have a walk where the dog is exploring, sniffing, using all of her senses. Uh, but uh, if we have a dog that's already learned to walk in a certain way, that then it, we need to take some extra time and effort to help our dog change the way that she behaves and walks. But it can be done because it's way more natural for a dog to explore and sniff. That's what they were actually born to do in a way. Mm -hmm. They're born to mm -hmm. sniff. So the first I think thing we both is... Uh, yeah? Sorry, Anna. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was going to say that I think if we posted something some time ago, I can't remember exactly what video it was, but it was about allowing your dog to choose uh, the walk, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for dogs that are inexperienced in doing this, it, sometimes you can be there for a while before they decide, okay, I'm walking in this direction. But they will do it. You know, you just mm -hmm. have to be a bit patient and wait for them to take the decision. Yeah, yes. I agree with 
and it's really important for a lot of dogs to really be aware of your own body because as soon as you turn into one direction the dog will think oh mm -hmm. that's where she wants me to go no so right. to be very still and very aware of your own body and wait for the dog so that the dog has a chance to think and decide where she wants to go yeah and i and think it's also uh, it's also a question about the environment around you because dog walking on all the time beside you might be um it might be learned but it also might be a sign that the dog is just so scared so it's holding on to one familiar thing that is you that is safe so maybe finding environment that's really quiet or maybe time of the day that's really quiet slowing down mm -hmm. being very patient just waiting for your dog to relax to make a decision you can maybe even stand on one place for for a bit if your if your mm -hmm. dog is comfortable in that place so just to wait for your dog to start sniffing it will take it doesn't happen overnight you know it just takes little little steps of making sure your dog is comfortable and is ready to make a decision yeah also another thing don't look at your dog too much sometimes yeah. it can that right. or if we talk a lot uh, mm -hmm. to our dog it, it's sometimes or a lot of the time it's better to just kind of not say anything right or as, as the steward Rugas, Rugas would put it shut up and stand still right. <laughs> well, well, you're, walking, you're not standing yeah. still <laughs> Yeah. And she, she posted this article about contact recently, didn't mm -hmm. she? About looking yeah. at your dog a, a lot. This is a good article to read as well. And yeah. one thing that I wanted to say about this is that in Spain, for example, I'm sure it's the same in other places, you know, people want this, your dog walking by your side. They think this is the, the right thing, you know, like it's an obedient mm -hmm. dog, a nice dog, but it's not. You know, we're completely shutting down the dog doing this. So this is the yeah. shift that we, with this page, want to promote, that we start mm -hmm. letting our dogs do more things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And let them think and let them make decisions and let them be proper adult dogs, unless they're, of course, not adult yet. Yeah. But uh, a dog that makes good decisions on his or her own that's what i want and that's probably what you want as well not a robot that i have to command all the time yeah. that's not it's bad for the dog but it's also very like tiring for the person i think to always have to tell your dog what to do why would we want that really it, it doesn't make that anyone happy. yeah the other thing that occurs to me is that this walk might be very boring you know, maybe the dog is doing the same walk day after day after day and, you know, it's not enriching mm -hmm. at all. So, mm -hmm. you know, what the thing that you mentioned before, taking your dog to another place, quiet place that is nice, full of scents and things that the dog can smell, that will also be good. Mm -hmm. And we can start uh, doing the enrichment even at home to maybe stimulate this curiosity about the world. Just the idea doing some boxes filling it with different things that you find on on the streets so putting um, objects that been sitting in your uh, basement for a long time for your dog to investigate just giving something new to investigate every day just maybe a couple of objects three five objects a day will stimulate that curiosity and maybe the walk experience will change for your dog as a consequence. So there is quite a lot to think about. Even we see with one question, we've already been talking for quite a bit. It's it's, it's a very yes. interesting topic, right? So these yeah. are just ideas you can think about and maybe decide which ones you want to try. You don't have yeah. to do it all. You don't have to do it all at once. Don't worry. Yeah, it's just about observing <laughs> and also trying different things, observing, uh, understanding your dog more and more. Mm -hmm. Okay, Hi, so shall we... I, I hope I didn't butcher your names, Latina. <laughs> shall we go to the second question, maybe? Yeah, yeah. let's go. Shall, shall I read it? Yeah. What is the best way of collecting the leash when it has been fully extended and you need to collect it? I always have the feeling that I'm applying too much pressure. Of course, I am talking about very long leashes. 
Right. Okay. So who's gonna who's gonna go for this one? <laughs> well, it, first of all, it's a very very good question because right. most of the questions we got were so good. Um, when we want we want our dogs to be comfortable during the walk that's why we use long leashes and as the dog is moving further away from us we pay out the leash and when the dog is moving closer to us we have to of course collect it we don't really want the leash to drag on the ground first of all it can be quite uncomfortable especially for a smaller dog or for a sensitive dog mm. that little feeling that they feel on their back where the leash is attached to the harness can be something that's bothering them and it and can be tangled and so on and the sound yes so we want to have the leash nice and loose as much as possible but not dragging so a little while ago luba actually made a video that includes this part of collecting the leash maybe yeah. you can show the video and explain what you're doing in the video yes of course so just give me a moment i will start again sharing my screen okay okay tell me once you can see we can see it okay great so this is a little video about leash handling so um it will show you how to collect the leash properly and also some other tips around the leash handling we hope to post it soon so Mm -hmm. You can use it more and more. Um, okay, so first point is holding the leash. We trying to make sure that the leash is secure in our hands. So we put the loop on our hand and hold it in this way. Another point is that we try to hold the leash with soft hands, meaning we try to imagine our hands are very soft. So we avoid accidental pulling or we um yeah we just try to make sure that the leash slides in our hand in a soft way and we don't pull on it of course and here is about collecting the length so we call this butterfly where you start doing the loops put on one side and then put another side and then again one side and then another side so even if you have a very very long leash in the end of the day it's all sitting quite comfortably in your hand in those loops and then it's very easy to release the extra length how i will show you now yeah releasing the extra length is also very easy when you have it all collected in loops just make sure you do it with soft hands to avoid any accidental pulling on the leash great soft stop um so if um if the dog is trying to go in the direction that we don't want to go for example towards the road right we try to um or if, if we really need to stop where is a cat or something like that so like we, we usually try to tell the dog to turn before uh, before hand but if it's necessary we need to stop we can do it in a soft way just by applying uh, pressure on the leash with your thumb slowly so it's not it's not rough using your body as Ina mentioned before if you turn your shoulders in the oh, I'm sorry it cut up uh, if you turn your body in the direction where you need to go your dog will follow so always be mindful about your uh, shoulders and your face where they are facing I hope I covered it all. If you have anything to add, girls, please. <laughs> yeah, so when well, you're a... sorry, <laughs> sorry. <I know. laughs> the problem online life. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you're starting with long leashes and and harnesses and all that equipment, I think it's easier to start with something medium length, so three meters or maybe five meters. And then in a little while, you'll get used to it. And then you can start using longer leashes, something like 10 meters, for example. Mm -hmm. And a good way to practice, I find, is you can have your dog on leash and then you give your dog a treat search. So you scatter a lot of small okay. treats outside in the grass 
And as your dog is moving around, searching for treats, you have all the time in the world because this is happening slowly to learn how to make these nice loops and then to release them slowly. So you can practice while your dog is doing a nice treat search. So yeah. it's good for both of you. You could even practice with with your friend or with you know with your partner, like I did. I just asked. <laughs> I attached the leash to um, to my partner and we've been walking just uh, around the house and, you know, I say, like, for example, let's try to turn around and it really helped because, of course, when you are walking with your dog, especially maybe if it's a reactive dog, you have other hundred things to think about or what's going on around you. So as if if you practice good and, uh, you know, enough uh, of leash handling beforehand, it's going to be much easier for you when you go out with your dog and you can, you know, uh, you know, not think about the leash and then other hundred things that are going around you. Uh, or even you can attach a leash to a chair and practice the loops and how you hold it. It's practice yeah, but, makes perfect. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you, I usually you get used to when it. I start, yeah, when I started, it was, you know, difficult because, you know, you don't, you're not born with the skills to handle a long leash. I yeah. just wanted to say, because we've got another question that is related to this topic, so maybe we mm -hmm. can include it yeah. now, uh, sure. which it says, what do we do when there is a sudden pull because they have seen a cat, a dog, or they are suddenly scared by something? And uh, uh, Luba mentioned the cat and uh, the yeah. soft stop. And I just wanted to add that when you are pressing slowly down on the leash, you are telling the dog slowly, I am just going to stop you, you know? It's not a sudden, you know, mm -hmm. here mm -hmm. it is, we're, we're not going any further. We're just you're, we're letting the dog know that we are going to stop, right? Mm -hmm. That is why it's called stop. Yes, and we are not pulling back on the leash, we are just stopping, we are turning in another direction with our body and waiting for a dog to follow us. And we are not pulling mm -hmm. the dog, we are not letting, we are not following the dog while it's pulling, so we are not teaching the dog to pull, we are just turning around and waiting for the dog to change the direction. Uh, and maybe also another thing to add, when there is a sudden pull, actually what we have to do is before anything happens we have to make sure that we're using good equipment which means a good h-shaped harness right uh, a good h-shaped harness is shaped in a way that even if a dog pulls it causes the least amount of damage or pain or discomfort because most of the force is transferred to the bone the sternum bone not to the soft tissues so if a dog suddenly pulls on a harness it that's a lot better than if it happens on a collar, for example. So that's step number one, and you do that before you even go out for a walk. Right. Um, yeah. Because it happens sometimes. We are none of us perfect, and our dogs are not perfect either, and that's, thank God. So yeah, something might startle them, something might excite them. It happens to any kind of dog, and that's why it's important to have the right kind of equipment. And of course, we can stop them. Sometimes we have to stop them. But there's a big difference between stopping a dog using the leash and the soft stop and pulling on the leash. We don't want to ever, as humans, pull on the leash. We don't want our dogs to pull on the leash either, but these two are kind of connected as well. So mm -hmm. there's a big difference between stopping and potentially pulling on the leash. Uh, hi Jenny and hi Santos. We have lots of people saying hi, which is great. Hello, now we also... Hello everyone. Now please give us some extra questions. We have a few <laughs> more questions to go through to today, yeah. but if you want extra questions as well, we would be really happy <laughs> to answer them. Okay, so I carry with the next one. Um, yeah, sure. Are there are there any books or reading that you would recommend? that it is especially important to understand dogs. Uh, there's a lot of materials out there, but 99% are focused on behavior. So we can point them to our website. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we have put a really nice uh, page with resources for you. It uh, doesn't only include books, but also uh, websites and um, you know pages, brochures, even videos. So feel free to check it out. Um, 
if you still have questions you can uh, message us we'll you know we'll always uh, answer mm -hmm. and they're very good books because there are uh, there are the ones from Turit, of course we've we've all read and we certainly is the first ones that we recommend but there are books, there are some books on movement there are some books on emotions and you know it's quite a varied list mm -hmm. so if you only want to read one book but i'm sure you want to read more than one book but i would start with on talking terms with dogs calming signals by tour drogas because this is mm -hmm. the one that explains the basics of canine communication and then you can go from there and there are many books actually in my personal opinion that do a fairly good job of explaining why dogs do what they do but then they follow that with training advice which i personally wouldn't take so the explanation is solid but for example if the explanation of something is well the dog is doing this because the dog is afraid and then it's followed by so you should make your dog sit in this situation then mm. that's not uh, in my opinion that's not good advice because making the dog sit first of all will do nothing to help the problem of the fear the dog is feeling if mm. anything yeah. it can make it worse because yeah. she's now in a forced position she can't move she has the feeling she can't get away so you can even read all kinds of books and just ignore the training advice and you'll be fine i think um oh uh we have another question that just come came in alana yes we'll get we'll get to your question we haven't answered that one yet i think um Okay, so yeah, but basically the, the list on our page is a good place to start if you want to mm. read dogs. Okay, so I carried on with the next question. Um, mm -hmm. This is uh, Enna's favorite question. We'll let her answer it. <laughs> me. Um, and it's from Virginia, which I think she's uh, watching. So thank you, Virginia. I read the question. If faced with a bad experience during the walk, is it better to wait for the dog to relax a little and go home or look for something to change the mood and continue with the walk? An example would be something that happened to me. We heard some dogs in distress during the walk and my dog got very scared. My immediate reaction was to go back to the car straight away. When he was a bit calmer, we went for a different walk in the car. Should I have gone home? Yeah, this is actually really one of my favorite questions. It's a great question. It's the question that I asked myself a lot with my dog. Uh, and I, I don't think there's a simple answer. If you have either a sensitive dog that gets spooked or upset or, or overexcited easily, or if you have any kind of dog and something scary happens, do you go home? or do you stay? Well, first of all, you don't really stay in the situation that is scary. That has to change, that's for sure. We don't want to cause any additional stress. Uh, but after the situation is over, it's it really depends on your dog and also on you. How are you doing? How is the dog doing? Uh, you are best served by really knowing your dog, really observing your dog, learning, what kind of body language speaks about stress generally and in your dog specifically and for example with my own dog in the beginning if something like that happened during our walk i would go home because i didn't know him that well i adopted him when he was already an, already an adult dog and we were still getting to know each other but now i know him i know how he is and he's also become much more resilient, which means he bounces back from stress quickly now, much quicker than he used to. So now I usually keep up with the walk. We change direction, we go somewhere else. Or like the question said, you, you can put the dog in the car and go somewhere else. I think that's a great idea. And you can continue the walk. But it's, you know, it depends on the situation. And it's okay to go home. It's fine. Yeah. And if you you don't have a walk on that day, it's fine. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Nothing will be wrong if you skip a walk every once in a while. Actually, it's good sometimes. I, so I agree with you so much, you know, and uh, I have the same experience with my own dog. And now even sometimes she still can have a bad day. Maybe her legs hurt a little bit more. And I see that, yes, she is more stressed than usual. And if something stressful happens, I'll go home on on a on a bad day and then maybe if she have if she's having a good day i see she's eager to continue the walk and she is able to handle it just sniff in some calmer place and go on with it it's, as ina said it's really about learning uh about your dog but it's totally fine to go home there is nothing wrong with it so if you have doubts if I, you're not sure i think i would go home yeah 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 that's probably a good advice uh, I also think that if you've allowed your dog to uh, make choices, like we always say in mm -hmm. our videos and our posts, they are going to tell you what they yeah. want to do. Mm -hmm. They are going to tell you if they want to leave or if they are prepared to stay a little bit longer and observe maybe from, you know, a distance or whatever. So I know with uh, Rufus that happens to me. You know, if something is close him, he can be there looking a bit more or sometimes he can just turn around and say, no, I'm not ready mm -hmm. today. So, you know, letting your dog decide is also probably a good And idea. it's going to make such a shift in your relationship where your dog will know that she can rely on you and know um, that you allow her to do a choice that's safest for her. It's, it's incredible to see this mm -hmm. shift in relationship happen with the trust growing. Yeah. Yeah. But it's brilliant because they they can decide for themselves, of course, within reason. But mm. it's really good how how well they they know themselves at a certain point. If they have choices and if they have the opportunity to make these decisions, they get really good at them. And then you get a thinking dog that yeah yeah makes good decisions, which is what we mentioned before. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Great Great. Question. Once again, I really love yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go to the next know. one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I live in the city and there aren't many opportunities for me to take my dog in the nature often. What can I do to make our city walks more fun and positively stimulating for my French bulldog? Yeah, that's a question from my best friend. So I say hi. <laughs> Thank you for watching and uh, supporting us all the time. And um, yeah, Letty, you wanted to take this one? No, you, you can. No, you can. You can talk about it if you want. But I was gonna say that we have a brilliant video <laughs> that we posted yesterday, actually, from yeah. Virginia again and Pepin. Thank you, Virginia and Pepin and uh, i don't know if we're gonna watch it today but uh it's on our website from yesterday and it's a walk in a garage actually and it's not a long walk it's a very stimulating walk really good for the dog really slow really focused the dog is really concentrating pepin and i would consider that uh, a walk you know that is a full walk you wouldn't need to do anything else and it's really short what it's do you just, think about that it's just a few minutes but in somewhere interesting where the dog can really use her brain and nose and investigate and learn something new and um you know i know that um it, it's not a possibility for many people to do long walks it, it doesn't have to be it can be some interesting place like a local store maybe that they allow you to come in very quickly and investigate and know many stores do that or some people with a garage that can allow you in and investigate or even your own parking lot or um, some a new street that you usually just don't think of going there to you know just varying the places and if you have a car that's incredible you can take your go your dog in drive even five minutes to a park that where usually you don't go, have a little nice walk, allow your dog to sniff and take your dog home. It doesn't have to be over like a faraway place 
long hours walk. No, it, it can be very small but interesting experience for your dog. Uh, you can choose like a storefront or parking lot next to mm -hmm. a store when the store is closed, for example. Yeah. Or m my dog loves to go to the train station on Sunday. Mm -hmm. In the morning, we, we have a small train station nearby, and there's basically nobody there. There There's no traffic. So on Sundays, he, he gets to decide where we go, and he takes me to the train station about 40% of the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he loves it for so many smells, different people that were there, you know, probably that's the reason. Or a nearby factory is also interesting to him so sometimes we go on sundays when there are no people there uh, which just tells us that it doesn't have to be beautiful to our eyes to be interesting for the dog you know yeah mm -hmm. we, um, we have a similar experience uh, we we usually take our dogs for walks somewhere else a forest or the beach but occasionally uh, we do a walk here in the village in the evenings when it's quiet because there's a lot of loose dogs and you know it's mm -hmm. difficult with your dogs to do that walk but occasionally we do and they always take a walk out to the bus stop which is mm -hmm. just you know 300 meters away and they have a sniff over there and we, we, we come back yeah it can be a very very short walk that is really interesting for them they get super excited about this walk much more than mm -hmm. we would go to the forest <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, we, we need to think, like, I really wanted to mention that here in the question, the breed is French Bulldog, and probably French Bulldog won't be able to walk for very long distances. So this is especially relevant for them, um, where you just try to organize a very a short walk, but interesting one. So, and also you need to know your dog, like my dog some, has some mobility issues. So again, we, we do the same. We do very short, but walks and different interesting places okay. okay okay let's crack on with the next one um, i don't know why i'm reading all the questions we decided we, we <laughs> i can read this one <laughs> if you want yeah. okay yeah <laughs> all right so that's a, a a very good question that we got um says um a question for you my dog shakes when i pick up her harness it is an h harness and she runs and hides when i try and put it on if i hold collar up she gets excited and comes to me to put it on it's same with any type of jacket she shakes she is very reactive to other dogs and people, especially outside our house and park. Just looking for some advice. I'll try using a longer smile English uh, or see if that helps. Um, she is always on uh, go outside, so I'll try calming sessions too. <laughs> Thank you for the question. So here is the question about a dog who doesn't like putting a harness on, a jacket on, um, and is reactive outside. So off to you girls. Yeah, so it, there's a lot in this question. And just like we said in the beginning, of course, we can't tell you over the internet, this is exactly what's going on. So right. we won't. <laughs> uh, but a lot to unpack. First of all, I would start thinking about, okay, so uh, we know that dogs, among other things, learn through association. So may, they may connect two things together that are not necessarily connected. Maybe something happened the first time she was wearing the harness, something that scared her. Uh, that could be one possibility. It could have something to do with the way the harness is being put on. Uh, some dogs take to harnesses really quickly and easily, and some need a bit of time. And it's really important to introduce the harness to them slowly and in a way that they consent, that they say it's OK. So we usually start just by having the dog sniff the harness slowly, and then we slowly either place it over the head or we clip it, depends on how it's made. We can also use treats and so on, but we do it slowly. We stay low on the ground, so we're either sitting down or squatting down, and we take our time. Uh, that's one possibility, but... Can I quickly add also yeah. about the harness? It also needs to be fitting in a good way. It has to yeah. be comfortable for the dog. I had a, a case where a dog was terrified of a harness because it was wrong, wrongly fitted and it was pressing on her belly. 
So it was quite painful mm -hmm. for her to wear a harness. So once it changed, it got back into norm. So you need, uh, if you need advice on how to fit a harness in a good way, you can find uh, articles on our web website about fitting a harness. Yeah, we so that part. Video. Yeah, we yeah. also have a video. We shared a video by Jenny Goldsby. Hi, Jenny. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's here. really good video on, on how to fit a harness. I particularly <laughs> like the bit about the head. You know, you were talking <laughs> enough about the head. Mm -hmm. You know, she turns the uh, harness on the side so it's wider when it goes over the head. It's really good. Anyway, mm -hmm. carry on. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's one thing that may go wrong. But since here uh, also jackets were mentioned, there's a whole nother option. Maybe it has nothing to do with the experience of putting on the equipment. Maybe it has to do with either some kind of pain or sensitivity of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not yeah. saying by any means that that's the case, but it is something that would be would be good to be looked at a little bit if there's something going on with uh, your dog in terms of any kind of pain or discomfort because that could also explain some of the behavior mm -hmm. uh, in a lot of cases when we have a dog that is very reactive as we like to say that is barking lunging very nervous something like that is going on in in a very large number of these cases there's also some kind of health problem in the background yeah. and yeah it, either it's the reason for the behavior or it's at least making the behavior worse because it's mm -hmm. just the same as with people you know how you are when you have a big headache or a toothache if anything is wrong if we're physically not doing well it's much more difficult for us to handle different situations we get stressed we get tense we're emotionally not okay if we're physically not okay and it's just the same so this may this would be something i would try to explore mm -hmm. yeah and um th th these are very good points and um overall uh, as we say i think it's a case where it you would benefit from um working or having a complete consultation with a qualified and ethical trainer. So uh, one mm -hmm. resource that we can recommend for finding such a trainer is um, Pet uh, Dog Trainers of Europe organization that we are part of. And um, the website of PDT, uh, the organization has a section find the trainer. So if you go on pdte.eu you'll find the section find the trainer so you can find the one that's close to you many of the trainers do now online consult as well before you know because of the covid so it's not ideal but i think getting help would um you would uh, really benefit from that in your dog of course because mm -hmm. we named a few possible reasons now but there can be a whole different one on there, there can yeah. be a number of reasons things are interconnected dogs are not simple creatures yeah. uh, they're we are. Intelligent and social and complex so the, it's really something that bears looking into yeah okay okay so we don't have any more questions yeah so we, we do have, have one from the comment <laughs> yeah we we okay. we've covered i think we've covered all of the ones we got in advance but alana yeah. is yeah. asking if my dog is excited, she says, in the environment or finds a good smell, she will go too fast and pull. What should I do to teach her to slow down and not pull next time? Thanks in advance. A good question and again, one that has a lot behind it. There's a lot yeah. to unpack there. Um, as we said before, we, we always start, if, if the issue is pulling on the leash, we start thinking about reasons for the behavior. And one of the first reasons why a dog might pull is because she's uncomfortable. So we have to make sure we have good equipment, an H-type harness and a long leash. A long leash meaning three meters or more. I prefer more. Um, the second thing that uh, we can ask is what's going on in the dog's life? uh is there 
a lot of very exciting things going on and this is why the dog is kind of you know used to getting excited a lot for example if we have a dog that does a lot of sports or uh, plays a lot of fetch does a lot of very uh, like boisterous activity this will be a dog that is used to being a little bit um on edge or a little bit above threshold all the time so if we try to um kind of calm things down generally in mm -hmm. that dog's daily life then usually in with some time um the dog will not get as excited by things anymore this is a very simplified way of putting it but um mm -hmm. there might be some kind of imbalance or pain in the body uh, or maybe the environment is a bit too exciting or too overstimulating for the dog. So uh, she finds a good smell and she will go too fast and pull. In a way, that's a little bit expected. So yeah, dogs will find tracks and they will try to follow those tracks. And in that moment, they are so focused on the smell that they're following that they kind of forget their own leash. So maybe a good way to go about that is to teach your dog to track and to have that as a hobby for your dog. So she kind of gets the chance to do that. It's really good for dogs and see if that changes her behavior on regular walks. That's something I would try. Um, and after all of this, and I'm sure the ladies have some other ideas, there is also an exercise you can do uh, to teach your dog loose leash walking, but that's after all of the other stuff. Um, you can read about this uh, in a book by Tour Drugas as well. It's called My Dog Pulls, What Do I Do? Which is exactly what you're asking, really. But um, I would try to go from the beginning and look at the whole picture, uh, not just try I think to that the problem away. Maybe before they start trying tracking and things like that. They, they could try a few things, you know, mm -hmm. like for example, uh, you know, like if, if, the dog is, if the dog is going too fast, it's, it'll, it's gonna be too frustrating to stop altogether, but they can try slowing super slow. So we're teaching the dog, yes, I'm gonna take you there because it is a really nice, interesting thing to do. And you can go and we're gonna sniff, but if you go that fast, you're gonna get there a lot slower that if you go nicely you know what i mean so just walking super slowly it will add to the dog concentrating and trying to sniff more things and getting still to the place that he wants to go or she wants to go mm -hmm. do you agree yeah, yeah so the, the dog knows that we're going to get there exactly, exactly. And, and, yeah, and yeah, going... yeah, we are gonna get there mm -hmm. But along with that, I would really, I kind of, as a first step, would focus on harvesting calm and concentration and um, being able to calm down. You know what I mean? Because just dog pulling and getting excited about smells, that's, that's good. But if the dog is not able to calm down quickly and slow down again, that's for me means that before before even thinking about what to do on the walk itself, I would do... Uh, I would do work towards calming the dog down and you can find those articles on our website about calming sessions that um, that are really great for that and treat searches just scatter a lot of treats let your dog collect the food is bringing the pulse down calming them down and um, allowing your dog to investigate different objects as we said before just doing some little little walks that are interesting to see just slowing down like bit by bit and then with that will come being calm on the walks as well we just need to harvest that calmness in the dog um you know at home and um creating situations where the dog is able to investigate in a calm way not to overstimulate the dog i would I would focus on that. But again, as Ina mentioned, there might be some discomfort in the body. And we often see that dogs that don't have proper body balance will tend to pull more, will tend to go faster. So mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, the, maybe our, I, our maybe our listen skills are not great, and we need to practice a bit more. What Anna yeah. said before about scattering some treats and you know letting mm. the dog sniff, and yeah, we practice a little bit on the leash and things like that. Yeah, yeah, just, just simple things. It's honestly just try to introduce a few simple things in your routine that. Uh, you know, just harvest the calm, allowing your dog to move slowly, to slow down. And you'll see how this little by little grows into the routine of the dog, the general, you know, behavior of the dog. So just trying to slow down together, I think is is great. No? <laughs> yeah, right. it's, it's a whole so, thing. I, I, the pulling on the leash or not pulling on the leash is actually more of a result of so many things. Right. that are going on in the dog's life so mm. just kind of yeah. playing around changing the everyday life is usually very powerful yeah. but i i would say that if the dog pulls once in a while then if she's wearing a good harness i wouldn't really you know kill myself over it yeah we are so excited yeah. <laughs> If it happens all the time, we have to change it because it's not good for the dog. But if it happens like once in a while, then, you know, once yeah, a week is fine. <laughs> and we are, we are all emotional, you know, like sometimes we get really excited or sometimes we get really upset. And it's normal. Like we don't expect us to be uh, constantly perfect and calm all the time. And we, I don't think we should expect our dogs to be. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah, if you have more great questions, you can message us. So <laughs> we've been talking for a while now. <laughs> yeah, a while. it's been a while. <laughs> uh, I don't see any more questions. Um, do you think it's okay. time to wrap up? Yeah, we can. I wrap think up. so. Yeah, we don't want to carry on talking and talking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and thank you so much to everyone who sent in yeah. questions, who messaged in the comments. And who is supporting our project? You know, we are really grateful and uh, we are really happy to see this community growing and uh, really flourishing. So, thanks so much, everyone. And um, as usual, we invite you to send us uh, your videos, your photos, um, to, um, you know, write to us uh, if you want to share your stories. We are. Um, really happy to receive those and post those so thank you so much and thanks so much for everyone watching today yeah and thank you nice everyone to you thank you thank you bye bye bye, -bye. bye everyone